What's up traders? In today's video lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to identify liquidity. So stay tuned. Now, today's video lesson is going to be another installment in a series of video lessons that I've been uploading to the channel. If you haven't watched any of the previous lessons before, feel free to head over to the channel, go to the playlist tab, and then you'll find all of the previous lessons linked under the lessons playlist, all right? Highly suggest that you guys do that. Now, in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about liquidity, all right? Liquidity is one of the confluences that we look for before entering a trade. Obviously, the first thing you want to do is you want to establish the underlying trend, in this case is bullish, you then want to see a valid break of structure to the upside. You want to look for the formation of a new swing high. We know that this particular swing high is confirmed after a change of character takes place. After that swing high forms, we can anticipate a pullback of price. Where do we want to see that pullback come to? We want to see that pullback trade into our discounted pricing zone. And then once price action is pulled into discounted pricing, we want to look for a mitigation of a higher time frame level. Within that zone, we look for a lower time frame change of character, and then we can look to buy price targeting our weak high, right? Obviously, as price action pulls back, we want to see imbalance filled, and then we also want to see liquidity taken. Now, liquidity is a very complex um, concept but I'm going to try my best to make it and explain it as simply as I possibly can. Okay. And in order to do that, before we dive into some actual chart work, I think it's important that we just do a little bit of theory just so we can establish a base understanding of where this particular concept of liquidity originates from. All right. So what I want us to do is I just want us to look at a few first principles here as to where liquidity originates from. Now, the very first thing that you need to understand is as a trader, you are a participant in a marketplace. All right. Whether you're trading currencies, whether you're trading crypto, stocks, futures or indices, it's important for you to notice that you are a participant in a marketplace. Now, what is a marketplace? All right. A marketplace is simply a space or a location where the purchase and sale of goods and services take place. Right. All participants in a marketplace are looking to improve their current situation. They all have a common goal, and that is to improve the current situation that they find themselves in when they go to the market. Now, if you think about a farmer's market, right, just quickly um, listen to this analogy. If you think about a farmer's market, you've got farmers and then you've got you and I, the buyers. So your farmers are selling produce, they're selling um, vegetables, they're selling wheat, flour, they're selling meat. And then the buyers go to the farmer's market to buy the produce, right? Now, the farmer is looking to improve his current situation by turning a profit from selling his produce. And then you and I are looking to improve our situation by obtaining food to feed ourselves and to feed our families, right? So you can see that a marketplace is this mutually beneficial space. Okay. Now, in terms of it being a mutually beneficial space, we can say that in a marketplace, all participants are dependent on each other, right? What that means is, if there are no buyers, there won't be any sellers, and then vice versa. If there are no sellers, there won't be any buyers. Because you can't buy something that isn't for sale. There needs to be someone who is willing to sell something in order for you to be able to buy it and vice versa. Okay. Now, what this does is this then generates the concept of supply and demand. Okay. Because what your buyers do is your buyers introduce demand into your marketplace. Okay. And your sellers introduce supply into the marketplace. Okay. This relationship of buyers and sellers directly affects price, right? 
Think of it this way. If demand is greater than supply, then your price goes up. Okay, I'll say that again. If your demand is greater than supply, then your price will go up. Why? Because buyers will be more willing to pay a premium for whatever it is that they want to purchase. Because the, the need is there, they have the demand. Subsequently, if your supply is greater than your demand, price will go down. Okay? Because there will be an influx of, let's just say, for example, eggs, and there is not as many people who are looking to buy eggs, your suppliers, your farmers in this case, will look to lower the price of eggs in order to make eggs more attractive to a potential buyer. So even though I wasn't necessarily looking to buy eggs, because the price is so low, I will then become interested, all right? So this relationship between buyers and sellers directly affects price, okay? So having said all of this, we can deduce that a market can only exist when there is a buyer who is willing to pay the price set by a seller, okay? This is very important. For every buyer, there must be a seller because no buyer can exist without a seller, no seller can exist without a buyer, all right? Now, you may be asking yourself, well, how does this relate to you as a trader. Think of it this way. The main goal of a trader is to make money, right? The main goal of a trader is to make money. It is to improve our current financial situation. Even though we enjoy charting, even though we enjoy performing technical analysis and we love the thrill of trading, at the end of the day, we are all trying to improve our current financial situation. Okay, now there are hundreds and hundreds of ways to make money as a trader in the market. And these ways to make money are referred to as strategies. Okay, so this might be um, trading moving averages, trading trend lines, supply and demand, trading um, structure, support and resistance, whatever the case may be, there is thousands upon thousands of ways to make money as a trader in the market. Now, what this means is at any point in time, trader A will be bullish and trader B will be bearish, okay? So if trader A and trader B are both looking at a financial instrument, trader A will, for whatever reason, have a belief that price is going to go up and trader B, for whatever reason, is going to have a belief that the same asset is going to go down in price, okay? What this essentially does is, it turns trader A into a buyer, and then it turns trader B into a seller, right? Do you notice how we have just satisfied um, the relationship that exists within a marketplace? Without a buyer, there cannot be a seller. Without a seller, there cannot be a buyer. This is essentially how it, it comes across in the realm of trading, okay? For every trade placed in the market, there needs to be an order on the opposite side of that order, okay? So for every buy trade that is placed by trader A, trader B would have placed a sell trade, all right? And this is where the concept of liquidity comes in. Because when we're talking about liquidity, we are essentially talking about orders in the market. Orders to buy, orders to sell a particular financial instrument. More specifically though, when we talk about liquidity, we talk about an area of the chart where a collection of orders can be found, all right? Now, when we talk about orders, we can talk about sell limits and sell stops. And we also talk about buy limits and buy stops. However, it's important to note that areas where market executions are anticipated are also considered when looking at um, liquidity, okay? Now, it's important for you to understand that liquidity essentially helps us understand 
where price is likely to go next okay by understanding what liquidity is and where liquidity is we are following the money right we're following the orders in the market and that's why a lot of times when people refer to supply and demand trading they also refer to it as trading order flow because what are you doing you are following orders in the market okay now the reason liquidity is such an important concept when it comes to supply and demand trading is because remember supply and demand trading is essentially a trend following strategy so if we are pushing bullish we want to find high value areas for us to continue with that underlying trend all right and then the same is obviously true for when we are bearish now our bigger players the hedge funds the big banks the guys with a lot of capital behind them they use liquidity to help them get in and out of positions because remember for every buyer there must be a seller so let's just say for example that um, a particular hedge fund wants to buy up a million lots of gbp usd okay that's what they want to do now obviously if they go ahead and place an order in the market for a million lots on gbp usd instead of price action doing this okay price will literally just shoot up okay it will literally just shoot up now what this would do is okay this particular scenario would cause a lot of slippage essentially um they would be unable to execute their trade at their desired price point because there would be such a, a, a large influx of volume at a particular time. So what they would ra much rather do is they would much rather use their lots in a manner that allows them to induce retail traders into the market by forming these patterns, okay? And then when price action comes back to a favorable zone for them, they will then put in the bulk of their positions to push price higher, okay? But what exactly do I mean by this? Right, let's, let's, let's dive into this just a little bit deeper. So same scenario, we've got a hedge fund or a bank or financial institution that's looking to buy up a million lots of GBP USD, okay? So this would be a typical trading day, okay? What you would have is, let's just say, for example, in here, you would have your Asian session range, okay? And then you would have your London session here, which would obviously be referred to as your London session push. And then after your London session push, you would have this particular price action in here that would be regarded as your New York reversal. So at the open of the London session, this particular financial institution would like to get involved in GBP USD. But at this particular point, there isn't enough liquidity for them to execute on their 1 million lots, all right? Because prior to the London session open, the only liquidity that is available for them to grab would be the Asian session high and then the Asian session low, okay? So once London opens, you can see the price action pushes down to grab that Asian session low. And then very shortly after the London open, price action goes ahead and grabs the, the Asian session high. But that isn't enough liquidity for this particular financial institution to go ahead and open a million lots. So instead, what this particular institution would do, all right, and remember, this is a hypothetical scenario to, to, to help explain how liquidity is built in the market and how we look to identify that liquidity in, all in order to follow the bigger players. So instead of opening up a million lots at this particular point, which is our London session open, what this particular financial institution would do is it would use, let's say, a quarter of the available lots that they would want to open, so 250,000. And what they would do is they would push price action up during the London session in this manner, all right? And let's just say, for example, that this particular point of this push comes into a resistance zone up here, all right? Now, 
I'm sure you guys would have heard of resistance zones at some point in your trading journey. But essentially, this is a, um, I would call it a retail approach where you're essentially looking for levels of price where we've seen reactions in the past. All right. That's all we're looking for. So let's just say, for example, that this particular bullish push comes into and interacts with this resistance zone in here. Now, from a retail trader point of view, what you would then see is you would see an accumulation of orders in here. All right. So essentially what a lot of people would be looking for is as price action pushes up towards this particular price point, right? You would look, you would see a lot of people entering sell limit orders up here. Okay. Because their anticipation is once price action taps a resistance zone, they want to see a large sell off from that particular zone. So what they would do is you would have a lot of sell stops that generate up here. At the same time, you would have your breakout traders who would be looking to take a buy stop order up here. All right. So what they're essentially looking for is they'll be looking for price action to shoot through this particular level. They're banking on this particular level failing and then they want to get involved in the market on the other side. All right. So purely by pushing price action up towards this particular resistance level, what this financial institution has now done is it has introduced a few more orders in the market here in the form of sell limits and buy stops. All right. And let's not forget that the sellers who want to get involved here may also look for a market execution. And then the breakout traders who want to go long from here are also going to be looking at market execution. So this particular area is going to be of high interest. There's going to be a large collection of orders in here. Okay. Now, what this does is this creates our first area of liquidity. And what I'll do is I will mark this particular level out as liquidity as we define it when we do our markups. OK, now the second thing that happens as price action pushes up towards this particular resistance level is there is the formation of a bullish trend line or, or an upward trend line. All right. Now, again, trend lines um, is a retail strategy of trading the financial markets. And essentially what you're looking for is you're looking to trade the bounce of a trend line. OK, so with this particular price action, what this financial institution has now done is and I don't want to I don't want you to think of it as they press a button and a trend line forms. All right. I don't want you to think it, of it in that manner. I just want to think I just want you to grasp the concept of they're trying to induce um, more orders to be placed into the markets in order for them to go ahead and place the bulk of the position that they actually want to enter at a favorable zone. All right. So the trend line has now formed. We've got a lot of buy orders that have set in here because a lot of people are going to be looking to trade the trend line bounce. And then remember, you've got your breakout traders as well who are waiting for this particular trend line to fail. All right. Once this particular trend line fails, you're going to be having a few sellers involved in the market as well. OK, so that's the second type of liquidity that we've got formed. Now we've got a uptrending trend line. OK, now your pattern traders, guys who like trading, ascending and descending channels, um, bullish flags, bearish flags, they're also going to be looking at this particular scenario and they're going to be telling us themselves that they've got essentially a nice ascending channel. OK, that is coming into a high value area, which for them might not be a resistance zone, but for them might be a nice area of value. And what they're anticipating is they're anticipating this particular pattern, right, to generate cells. OK, so obviously for them, they would now be placing even more orders at this particular level at our trend line. And then also your 
trend line traders who are looking for bounces on the bottom trend line are also going to be looking for bounces at the upper trend line because essentially what this is is just consolidation that's moving at an angle all right so now we've got even more orders that have entered the market as a result of ascending and descending pattern traders who are looking at this level they're looking at this particular pattern formation and you've got those trend line traders who are also looking at the top of this particular formation as an area of value okay so all the way during our london session what has now happened is right just by using hypothetically 250,000 lots of the million lots available this particular financial institution has now generated a retail scenario in here at this particular price point that has brought in a number of orders into the market okay now before we go any further notice how your trend line traders would have been making money in this particular scenario notice how your resistance traders would have been making some money in this particular scenario and then your pattern traders would have been making um, some money in this particular scenario okay what tends to happen whenever these types of formation forms is instead of playing out exactly on our resistance level every single time sometimes what will happen is price action will push slightly higher okay slightly higher it will violate this particular resistance zone so everyone who was looking to sell in here will get stopped out and all of the breakout traders who are looking to buy would get triggered into positions and then as soon as people are stopped out and buyers are triggered in price action then pushes down lower so what then happens is you have now taken liquidity in the form of sell stops you have trapped buyers in here by inducing them into the market by by generating a fake breakout and then what you end up doing is price action ends up pushing down lower so the trader who is looking at this particular pattern might also get stopped out in here because he's looking to sell the top of the pattern and he's looking to sell it down to satisfy the 90 percent rule all right so even though okay even though this particular scenario would have given you an opportunity to make money as a retail trader as it is as it, as it is denoted you need to understand that this is exactly what they want you to do because this is knowledge that is widely available all right these particular setups are widely available a lot of us would have started out trading currencies in this way okay but that's beside the point so now we have the open of our new york session remember our london session and our new york session overlap now a characteristic of the new york session is that it tends to correct whatever movement we have seen during the london session so that's why it's normally referred to as the new york reversal all right so now what we've seen is a lot of orders have been induced into the market price action now pushes down lower all right this is where our smart money concept traders come into play right our supply and demand traders come into play because what do they now have okay at the high of the asian session in here they would have identified a valid break of structure to the upside right they would have identified a valid bullish break of structure to the upside in here now where did that particular break of structure originate from well that particular break of structure would have originated from this demand zone in here right let's just say for example that this particular markup is on a four hour chart right no problem so they would have identified this as a four hour demand zone and now during that new york session they are patiently waiting for price action to pull back towards their particular demand zone before getting involved in the market all right now they have imbalance in here which they have correctly identified all right and then they also have some liquidity here that has formed in the form of this particular trend line okay so what they have now seen is they've seen a valid break of structure to the upside they've seen liquidity that's forming so they're anticipating this liquidity to be taken 
as price action comes in to fill this imbalance, then they're looking for a mitigation of a four hour zone before price action then continues high, all right? But notice what price action actually does. So price action during that New York session pushes down, granted it does take the liquidity available from that trend line from this particular pattern. It does fill the imbalance that was left over in here as price action pushed up. And then it did give us a valid mitigation of this four hour zone. But after a second mitigation or a double dip in this particular four hour zone, price action pushes up, it gives us the reaction to the upside, and then it drops. It takes out all of these smart money traders that were looking to trade this particular order block or look, they were looking to trade this particular demand zone. So it takes out all of these guys, right? It essentially sweeps this particular level and then it pushes higher. Now, what exactly has happened here? Okay, so during our London session, a particular retail pattern was generated to bring orders into the market, right? To induce people to get involved in the market. And even though this particular retail pattern was created for inducement purposes, there are a multitude of opportunities to make money in here. Let's not get, let's not get it um, twisted. There's a lot of money to be made in this particular scenario. But then after this particular um, pattern has formed and those orders have come in, now they look to induce even more orders into the market in the form of the smart money traders, right? The smart money concept traders, you and I. So then they, they generate another smart money concept pattern that looks to get um, traders involved in the market because now we're all placing buy limit orders um, in this particular area or we're looking to execute at market and then all of our stop losses are going to be placed underneath here okay because we're anticipating price action to push higher but then what actually ends up happening is this particular double dip into the four hour demand zone is actually right a double bottom that has formed in here within that level now what you need to understand is is that a double bottom is also a form of liquidity that you tend to look for at major structure resistance and support zones okay so what you have now seen is you have seen a double bottom that has formed within let's just call it a structure support level down here and i'll change the color to something else let's actually make that red so now you've got a double bottom that is formed at this particular structure support okay and now you've not only got your smart money traders who are looking to get involved at the mitigation of a four hour level a four hour demand zone but you've also got retail traders who are looking to trade this particular double bottom and what you now have seen is you've seen even more orders that come into the market at this particular point in time right and then what does price action end up doing as we said it pushes up it gives us that initial um, inducement now as a smart money trader what you want to be doing is you want to be making sure that you've got certain rules in place for your risk management so that if this particular scenario does play out that you would have taken a few partials probably at here you would have probably moved your stops to break even just to cover yourself in the event that something like this happens if you don't and you have full position still on then you'll get swept out by this particular low or by this particular push to the downside because what is everyone on Instagram telling smart money traders to do? They're telling them to put really tight stop losses right after their mitigation or right after they see a change of character. And these big players, they know that this is happening. So price action pushes down. It takes out even more liquidity that is built in here and before and then it pushes up. So during this particular push during the London session, they would have used, let's say, 250,000 lots to generate this particular scenario. As the New York session opened, they would have used, let's say, another 150,000 lots to bring price down. Now, obviously, at this particular point, all of the positions that they would have used to generate this particular scenario, as price action pushes down, will now be in negative, right? They will now be running at a negative. And then obviously, 
these positions that they use to bring price down will be running positive, right? But they've only used about half of their available lots to generate this particular scenario, all right? Once price action comes into this particular price point, which remember, just so happens to be the open of the London session when they decided that they would like to buy up a million lots of GBP USD, that's when they now go gung ho and they put in 500,000 lots, okay, of what they have remaining. They have induced enough orders to enter into the market for this particular position size of 500 lots to not just shoot price up all the way, but it has allowed them to get involved at a price point that is favorable to them, right? So then what you would have is you would get this large increase um, or this large bullish momentum that comes in after price action reaches this particular level. Now, from a smart money point of view, what exactly has happened here, all right? Because you would have thought that you played it correctly in here and to a large extent yes you would have played it correctly here but what you would have what you might have failed to realize is that there was a another four hour demand zone right in here that was unmitigated at the open of the london session and there was also this particular imbalance zone that sat just above it okay and once price action started pushing to the upside, it actually generated a little bit more liquidity here by creating this particular zone, okay? Now, if we just quickly um, remove that resistance zone out of the way, you would then mark this particular level out as liquidity, all right? Now, this, this particular um, liquidity is something that I would like to call engineered liquidity, okay? This here, after price action gives you that initial push off. This is what I'd like to call um, engineered liquidity because more often than not, this particular demand zone would be the more obvious level to look for those buys from as a supply and demand trader, okay? And they know that. They know that you're looking to trade this. So they generate this particular level for you to place your orders and then they'll look to push price down to the extreme zone before pushing price up. Now, now, it's important to note that not all pairs behave in this manner. It is an occurrence that tends to happen, but some pairs prefer the deeper mitigation before a continuation over other pairs, all right? So from a smart money concept point of view, there was this four hour demand zone that, was, that sat at the extreme zone that was not mitigated. We had imbalance that was not yet filled. And essentially what we had is we had our swing low in here and we had our swing high in here. So if we bring on our premium and discount tool, which we have spoken about in the past, what we then have is we've got price action coming into that discounted price that we like to look for when we are looking to trade higher. Okay. And then we see price action pulling down, mitigating a level and then continuing higher. So from a smart money trading point of view, even if you get taken out here, let's say you took some parcels up here, price action rolls over to take you out for break even, right? Even if that occurred and we get another mitigation of a zone in here, provided this particular setup does not break down, okay, you can still look for a re-entry in here because it is valid it would meet your rules, right? Because we still have, we still have liquidity being taken. We still have a valid break of structure. We have imbalance that is being filled and we have a mitigation of a demand zone that sits within discount pricing. So all systems are still go. We still have all of our confluences so we can still look to buy up the market in here. And where would we realistically be targeting for? We would be targeting these weak highs in here because remember overall price action is pushing bullish okay and once we have the formation of this weak high we call it a weak high because why it fails to break below the previous low so we can anticipate this particular high to go then we can easily 
aim for this level here all right now this particular markup may be a four hour markup all right but understand that this pattern this occurrence takes place on the daily on the four hour on the 15 minute on the one minute and that's where you tend to see guys managing to secure 10 R trades 15 R trades because if this scenario takes place on the five minute or the one minute and you're looking to aim for a 15 minute week high you're gonna be riding this thing to the moon all right but that does not mean that you should be looking to ride this thing to the moon one thing you definitely need to be, get comfortable with is you need to get comfortable with paying yourself first so even though you know or you have a strong inkling that price action may come up to take this particular high after the mitigation all right there is every chance that we get a push off this zone and then price action just dumps there's every chance that that can happen even though we're trading from discounted prices even though all of our rules are met the market does not need to do what you want it to do it's going to do whatever it wants okay so what you need to become comfortable with is instead of holding out 100 percent of your position to look for this right look to take partials potentially if it fits your trading psychology if it fits your personality look to secure profits along the way and manage your trade as this particular price pushes up towards here because a lot of times if you take a loss when you have been in significant profit it can affect your psychology a lot more than a loss that taps you in and immediately taps you out all right so it's important that from a psychological point of view once you have your edge down you then start looking at what's the best way to manage my risk all right now what i have actually just done with this particular markup is i have given you guys all of the different types of liquidity that you tend to see in the market all right you've got session highs and session lows so for example your asian high and your asian low would be a form of liquidity you've got trend lines right that are a form of liquidity as well supply and demand levels can also act as a form of liquidity but in in the um smart money concepts realm you might hear it referred to as inducement as well all right so this is also a form of liquidity you've got your resistance zones and your support zones in here and in here that is a form of liquidity as well and then you've obviously also got your double tops your double bottoms um, triple tops and triple bottoms that also form part of liquidity right so when we talk about liquidity we are basically just talking about areas of the chart where we see a congregation of orders okay because there are a number of ways to trade the financial markets at any point in time trader a will be looking to buy the asset, and trader b will be looking to sell the asset and in that particular case you have now satisfied the relationship of what a market is you have now satisfied the relationship of supply and demand all right now to end of this video as promised we're going to do some um, charting work just to bring it all together in a practical setting to show you guys exactly what we're doing and i'm going to perform as um, i'm going to perform a real life market breakdown here very quickly we can all agree that on the daily chart here gu has been bearish and if we mark out our external structure points very quickly here we can see that we've essentially had this price action in here right so recently we have seen a break of structure to the downside in here okay and after that break of structure to the downside we have seen a new low that has formed this means that we are obviously playing within this particular daily leg right and if we bring on our premium and discount tool for the daily what we are anticipating is we're anticipating price action to now pull back towards premium pricing and then we're looking for a mitigation of a valid supply zone something like this okay 
and then once price action has tapped into this particular supply zone we're looking for price action to push lower right now obviously this setup can be refined ever so slightly on the four hour so if we drop down to the four hour we can see our daily swing points okay and it just so happens that our daily swing points will be the same as our four hour swing points in here because essentially what you've got is you've got price action doing this you do have some internal structure in here but we go from this high to this low in here okay and then we've got this daily level um, that we've marked out this daily supply level in here and if we bring on our premium and discount pricing once again we can see that we have now begun our bullish pullback right to relieve this bearish push to the downside okay so at the moment we're trading within discount pricing of a bearish market so what can we do we can look for counter trend opportunities in here okay but the anticipation is is that price action is going to push up towards this daily demand level and then we want to look for potential sells now obviously that does not need to happen in order for price action to push down okay we can see price action come in and mitigate something like this here on the four hour we can see price action come into this and then after this particular level has been mitigated we can see price action rolling over why because it would have grabbed premium pricing already however the reason you would look for a mitigation of this level is purely because of the fact that there exists liquidity in here all right so here we've got trend line liquidity that is that has formed on the four hour okay and just above this four hour liquidity we've got an imbalance zone right in there which sits below the daily level and this daily level can actually be refined right but what i'll do is i'll mark out this four hour level in here okay so if i get rid of the daily we know where the daily is if we mark out this four hour level now okay we can see that we've got a supply level that sits within premium pricing of a bearish trending market okay below that particular supply zone we've got imbalance we've got liquidity and all we need to wait for when price action pushes into this level is we need to look for a lower time frame change of character and then boom bob's your uncle price action heads down all right so very quickly that's exactly what we're looking at on gu coming into the next few weeks um and the next few days right now from a four hour point of view because we know that we are currently now in a counter trend scenario where we can we can look for counter trend buys as we trade out of this particular discounted price zone if i just drop all the way down to the 15 minute now you'll see the exact same scenario that we just depicted on the markout we'll see that this that exact same scenario played out this past week on gu okay and what do i mean well we can clearly see that after price action put in this new four hour low in here all right we had a bullish reaction to the upside all right and this particular bullish reaction has obviously led to valid bullish breaks of structure to the upside so we had one in there on the 15 minute we had another one in here again also on the 15 minute and as these breaks of structure were occurring what was happening is we were seeing valid demand levels forming okay but if we just bring on the bar replay tool very quickly what you can see is at the start of your trading session on the 8th of july you would have had a very clearly defined bullish market all right you would have seen valid breaks of structure to the upside you would have seen valid demand zones uh, that has formed and you would have also seen that there was this trend line liquidity in here that has formed okay so what you would now be looking for is you would be looking for price action to pull back to grab all of this available liquidity okay you'd be looking for price to fill imbalance which would be in here 
And then after your mitigations of these demand zones, you would be at least, all right, you would be at least targeting the liquidity that has been left behind here at your Asian session high. Because remember, your session highs, your session lows, swing points can also form or can also be regarded as a form of liquidity, right? So you would be looking to trade this particular scenario. Now, even if, okay, even if price action pulls back to mitigate this level, right? You are aware of the fact that you've got a lower level down here. So you might be telling yourself, all right, no, hang on. We have a little bit of inducement here. Okay, we have a little bit of engineered liquidity in here. So instead of playing this particular 15 minute zone, you, you, you would be waiting for the, the mitigation of this level. Okay, and if we play price action forward, you will see that as London session opens, you get that London volume that pushes price down, right? Now, everyone that was looking to get involved here would have been stopped out as a smart money trader. Everyone that would be looking to get involved here would be stopped out as a smart money trader. And what happens soon after, right? What happens soon after we get both of these levels failing, okay? Price action ends up tapping into a little 15 minute demand zone down here, which was never mitigated, all right? An imbalance, which was never filled. Do you notice that? So if I just zoom in all the way here, notice how we have a valid 15 minute demand zone down here, which does have some imbalance that has not been um, filled yet. It did lead to a break of structure, so it is valid. And we do have the engineered liquidity in the form of this particular level here, right? So as recently as Friday, the 8th of July, you would have seen this particular scenario playing out where liquidity was generated in the form of trendline liquidity, in the form of session highs, in the form of supply and demand levels. And you would have seen price action being pushed down to mitigate a level that was previously unmitigated and fill imbalance that was previously unfilled, okay? And then after that particular uh, mitigation occurs, what do you see? Price action then steadily begins to push up, right? And it just so happens that this particular push up happens more or less around the time that your New York session open, opens. Now granted, this was an NFP week, so we had NFP in here, right? But essentially, what, what played out was, right, you had price action pulling down, grabbing loads of liquidity in order to fuel the next push higher. And that's why the concept of liquidity is such an important one, such a valuable one when you're a smart money trader. Because as soon as you are able to identify your liquidity, you know where price action is like most likely to go, all right and after you get a mitigation of something valid you can then target liquidity again as an area where you'd like to exit your position all right now i hope you guys were, were able to find value in this video i know that it was a slightly longer one feel free to watch it again um, play it through make notes because once you are able to understand the concept of liquidity and how liquidity ties into supply and demand levels, you are that much closer to really having an edge in trading the markets that will lead to really, really high probability profitable setups. All right. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content and I'll see you in the next one.